Hey, hey, I'll get started in a few minutes. Feel free to say hey, let me know where you're watching from. All right, I got a few of you on here with me. So <laughs> I was a little bit, a couple minutes late getting getting my stuff together. Um, if my stream quality goes bad or my voice, the audio is low, just let me know, but I think it should be fine. And yeah, so hopefully some of my regulars will be on here. And I'm just going to go over um, a few tips for doing the, um, with the Instapressionist method to be specific. So like a lot of you guys are familiar with my Instapressionist brushes, but in case you're new, um, they're a specially set of, design set of brushes that let you, basically it's using the uh, pattern stamp tool with the impressionist mode on and the lined and basically what I've specially designed these brushes so that when you paint over an image it like slightly displaces the pixels um, it uses that image as a base like whatever you define as your image is going to come out the brush but the brushes are specially designed to like displace the pixels a little bit so you can get all these really cool impressionist effects just from a photo. So this is great for designers. Um, hey, David, super happy to see you. Yay. Uh, this is like such a great um, set of brushes and, and technique to take your photos and create more artistic effects on them or turn them into an uh, like a digital artwork or whatever. And um, I actually, and, and it's cool because some people are a little bit like snobby about, oh, you know, like artistic purists, you need to like do everything from scratch and da da da. But some of us are not great um, illustrators or we don't really want to take the time. So I totally believe, and this may not be like uh, fine art, for, you know, or whatever but it lets you do some really cool things, create some really fun stuff, do it fast, do it easy, and have an artistic uh, input into it. So, you know, like with um, AI and all this stuff, at least with this, you can control the flow of the pixels. You get to really have like an artistic say in the vision of like where this is going. Hey, gotta leave, super happy to see you. Yay, I got some of my, my, my friends here. Um, so what I wanted to do is, um, I still have loads of people loving to use these brushes, but I kind of wanted to like share some of my, um, little tips and tricks and things that might help you get the most out of these brushes. Um, if you use these in your artwork or part of your artwork, and if you're totally, let me shut this down. My stream is good. Good. Um, so like I actually, um, most of you guys are probably aware of this, but anyway, I collaborated with Adobe to bring these a sample set of these brushes. So um, there's this uh, Adobe, I have a link down below. You can go to Adobe Creative Cloud, download a sample, and I go over the whole technique in detail. But it's really nice because you can, um, you know, create uh, like a digital image from a photograph, but you get to control the size, the direction of the brushes, and it just really can give a really cool effect if you do it right. So you can get those there. And then I'm also gonna play around with the Modern Impressionist brushes. So you can get a brush sample on Adobe Creative Cloud as well. And then here's just some little, um, this is some samples of the Instapressionist brushes. They're available on my site. And 
it's really nice because here's like the original photograph and you know do you can choose different brushes and it's all about creating the insta like the impressionist sort of effect from a photograph but as you can see here you get different looks by choosing different brushes and different effects and i kind of want to go over some of the a couple little things that i've seen you know sometimes uh, uh like on people that have used these brushes and little things that i noticed that maybe this can help you take it to the next level so we're using those playing with some modern impressionist brushes I did use my brushwork brushes a little bit, especially brush number 10. I love to add some accents, um, like textural accents. And what's cool about, like I'm gonna show you kind of my little tricks and ways that you can make your impressionist from photo, you know, like the impressionist artwork you create from the Instapressionist brushes, a little more like realist, not realistic, but like maybe like you put more work into it that you did. So little bits of like tricks. And I won't do over, go over the whole thing because I don't want to like bore you. You guys can check this out. And then I did use some of my um, Citrus Creative Kit, which I actually have some really cool texture brushes and some really cool even pattern brushes. But I use the texture brushes and some of the color palettes for this. So anyway, I'm going to just show you kind of how I got started in some of the finer details of the tips and tricks. But FYI, on the... I've got a whole playlist on YouTube to go over this in detail, but this might help you guys anyway a little bit. So first of all, this was like a free photograph on Adobe Create, um, no, uh, Adobe Stock. So free image, I can use it, it's cool. And the first thing that I want to do is, oh, by the way, this city is Menton, uh, Menton, if you're French, Mentone, if you're Italian, and it's right on the border of France and Italy, and I've been here loads because I used to live in Nice, which is right next door. And this is very known for uh, citrus fruits and all the, and it's very um, pretty with all of the colors of the houses. And they have a real famous citrus festival every year for carnival, which Nice actually has the um, third largest carnival in the world. And then this is like an offshoot of that. So they have a big citrus festival and all these floats with all these lemons. So You'll always see like that motif of lemon and you can buy lemoncello there. You can buy um, all these like lemon sort of things uh, in Monton. So it's famous for that, but really nice, nice place. I love to visit. So I'm, I'm going to show you a couple little tricks that I did. So the first thing that I did, um, oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, David in, uh, oh, in Mexico, I bet, I bet they have like some really cool, um, some really cool colors down there. Yay, trips. We love trips. <laughs> I can't wait to go back to France. Oh my God. I'm missing it. Like my soul was there. <laughs> so anyway, um, hey Rhoda, super happy to see you. So yeah, this is this is actually, um, you'll always see this, uh, this, this city on, posted on Instagram and stuff. And it's, you know, they'll really turn up the, what do you call it? The saturation and, you know, on their filters and stuff. So we're kind of going to do the same thing. So I'm going to show you a little bit what I did. So the first thing I did was I just duplicated the background layer and I went edit, adjust, um, hue saturation. And I took it up like, I don't know, 25%. So it really kind of emphasized that because as long as we're making this, you know, whatever, we should make it like, you know, we want to bring out those colors and everything. And so then the next thing that I did was I actually duplicated that background layer again and I went to edit and uh, what is it? Layer, where's my adjustment layer? Why am I not finding it? Image, okay, image adjustment. Um, I went into the hue saturation. Yeah. Okay. So I went into the hue saturation and I actually changed the hue and I did this two times. So I made like one that was more green and then one that was more pink because I wanted to kind of like overemphasize those colors. And so I did this. So I've got this more pinky hue because you always see people dramatizing those colors when they're, um, you know, doing that. So I clicked OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to option click on that layer mask to hide it all. 
And then I just took like a basic white brush. Um, I'm just going to grab like a blob brush and I took, made sure I selected white and then I went through and kind of just really loosely picked some of the ones or the buildings that were more pinky and I went like this. So I did two different adjustment layers. Um, so not only did I actually emphasize the, um, the, and this is doing it like really badly, but I'll just show you that's, that's kind of like what I did. So I'm just, uh, exposing that layer on some of the buildings. So here is my final one. So there's the pink that I added. So as you can see, it just kind of, you know, took it up a little level. So we got, we added the pink layer and then I made one layer a little bit more green or kind of yellow green. And so I did the same thing there. And even I didn't just, I took the layer up crazy, but then I decided it was too um, dramatic. So I took the opacity back down to 50%. So this was just a way to like get that sort of dramatization of my colors before I, you know, start in with the Instapressionist brushes. So this is just some of my um, things that I was doing to prep my image. And then also the, one of the last things that I did was I used my spot healing brush tool and just hid some of these things, which on this one, I hid that, I decided to hide this. But later when I brought my image over, I decided, I, I realized I'm like, oh, I need to hide some more. And so I just make a new layer on top of everything. I grab my spot healing brush tool. I make sure that I have like content to wear, sample all layers. It's got uh, like um, low hardness, I guess you could maybe take the hardness up. I don't know. I just grabbed a default brush and then I just, you know, like did like this and covered over some things um, like so just to kind of hide it. And then I would clean it up and everything. Um, but that one didn't go out all the way. Anyway, you can just keep kind of going until you get rid of the things that you want. But what I did was I actually went to here and that's when I was like, okay, this is good enough. And then later I changed it. So now that I have like the whole kind of adjusted um, design that I wanted, I was like, okay, this is cool. So I made a new layer at the top of my document and I hit, um, what is it? Command option shift, is it E? Yeah, command option shift E, which merges all onto a new layer. And I do tend to use that one a lot, although sometimes I forget the keyboard shortcut, so whatever. So then I just like took that layer and I copied it over into my document. And so now I'm just gonna peel back some layers here and then show you some of my process. And I think it's like, I mean, I did this, okay, so I did this from start to finish in, even with all the experiments in like an hour, so it's not so bad. And I didn't, the only thing that I actually technically painted was like the, the lemon tree, the lemon things, and that's quite abstract to be fair. So yeah, so I'm gonna turn those off. And what else? Um, yeah, I'll get through right through this, but uh, feel free to drop in any comments. Let me know what you're doing. I hope you're having a good Friday. It's funny, sometimes I'm like, I don't wanna make it too boring. So I kind of try to clip through things good, but I always love to see your comments. Even uh, it doesn't have to be about the, the tutorial. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let me see here. I've got some adjustment layers. Okay, I'm, I'm grouping my layers. And by the way, I'm going to have my PSD file available for my subscribers, whether you're on Behance or Patreon. Um, most of you guys are on Behance. It'll be after the live stream, I'll attach it up there. And I have been going through and attaching the files for my last few um, lives. So make sure that you guys get those. Um, on Behance, it's a little bit annoying and I don't know if you guys, I don't think you guys get any notifications when I uh, like attach, say I do a live stream, but I attach the file after. I don't think you get any notification, which is a little bit annoying, but anyway, um, 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to pick some of your guys' brains and see if uh, if you do that. Oh, I forgot to put my restream chat on. Oh, maybe there's. Um, although I don't know if it's working. So this is my software, and this like connects me with anybody who's tuning in from YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook. But my friend Manon yesterday text or tweeted me that she had been chatting to me on my live stream on Twitter and it didn't even show. So that was sad. I was like, I could have been having like bumps up. <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, I love to get comments. So I was, I was sad that I missed her comments. Okay. So, okay. So basically what I did was I pasted this image into my document that I, my final slides that I want to work with. And then I decided I needed to get rid of this part right here. And so I just did again the spot healing brush tool and I just kept rubbing on it until it was okay. And as you can see, this is not perfect, but this is going to be impressionist. So I know that like, it's not a big deal, you know, so whatever. And then what I did was I put a new um, layer above that and I just added using my gradient tool. Um, I had the gradient tool on foreground to back transparent and with white selected and I just added some gradients to the side because I knew that I want this like kind of softening effect and it's going to look nicer in the end. So it's all about prepping the, the, um, the image, the final image. And then I like, uh, oh yeah. So then I have my, now I'm like, okay, this is a good image to work with. We're, we're golden. So then what I did was I merged everything onto a new layer and then I duplicated that layer. So I've got this layer and I thought I would try something a little bit different um, before I uh, go ahead with my Instapressionist brushes. I thought I would play around with going ahead and doing, um, a filter so just to add a little bit of extra artistic sort of effect before I go in um, with those impressionist brushes so what I did was um, I actually kind of liked this uh, cutout filter I think this is the cutout effect and what I liked about it was it got rid of some of those really darks um, in this image and kind of replace them with a softer brown which I don't know if it made that much difference in the end but uh I think I think maybe it did and I like it so I'm I'm always experimenting and playing and stuff so I went ahead and filtered that image and the levels was six the edge simplicity was two the edge fidelity was three and then I clicked okay and then I got, um, oh, thank you so much, Marilius. Right? So here you can see, let's just zoom in here. So there's the original image that I've already prepped color wise. And then here's the image with the filter. So I think it's quite, I think it turned out kind of cool. Um, but just to kind of like already add an artifact, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and so, to really get away from that feeling of it being so realistic. So I, I think it was cool. I don't 100% know if it turned out really better in the end or not. Hey Axel, super happy to see you. But I thought this was a cool experiment and I liked it so far. So I did that, but here, let me hide the um, like disable layer mask. So, but around the edges, this, um, when I did the filter effect, it added these jaggy sort of things, which I didn't like. So what I did was I just um, made a layer mask. And let's see here, let me delete this. So this is how I had, this is the original. There's the um, cutout filter. So I just put a layer mask on. I went over and I grabbed my gradient tool and I grabbed black and I just kind of went like this. Um, okay, wait, no, I wanted to make sure I got the, um, I had it on a radial, radial gradient, but I just kind of like got rid of some of that around the edges. And so now it looks like it looked better. And also even here, so I wanted that blue of the sky back. So 
I just did that. So now we kind of have a good jump start. So I thought that was kind of cool. And let me just take back my, um, my thing. Delete layer mask. So I'm going to go back to my original anyway. It was good. So we're good there. And so then I just kind of merged it all into a layer. So this is my starting point for my Instapressionist brushes. And so what I'm going to do for the Instapressionist brushes, most of you guys are familiar. I went to like, uh, edit, define pattern, or I have a command M. I have a keyboard shortcut because I use this all the time. And I just defined the whole image. There's no selection going on as my, you know, base for my brushes. And then, um, then we're going to turn it into this with the brushes. So uh, if you guys don't have them already, you can get some for free on Adobe Creative Cloud. But I'm going to show you just a couple of my little techniques that I wanted to share um, with you guys about that. So let's see here. I think my, there it is, my thing right there. So I'm, of course, I've got the pattern stamp tool. We want to make sure aligned and impressionist is checked and we get that image that we just defined as a pattern. And then let's vibe over to our uh, modern impressionist brushes. No, not modern impressionist, instapressionist. Hello, uh, instapressionist. And all I do is I keep building layers and layers and layers and make each brush stroke on its own um, thing. So let me just go over here. I want to do um, two up let's here. Window, wait, window, arrange, two up pores. Wait, vertical, two up vertical. Okay, so I want to have like kind of the, our um, good one over here that we've already done and then the one in progress. So we're going to have a little side by side. So yeah, so let's do that. So I'll just, I think I like, you can just play around and see what works. So a lot of times just to get going, I'll just grab one brush and go over everything. And it's all about building up layer on layer on layer and on layer. So, um, I'll just do this. And as you can see, this is like makes it impressionist, but I'm not worried right now that it's making it a big old mess. Um, but the thing is, is when you're doing this, you can change the brush size. So if you want it to be more accurate, the brush to be more accurate and displace the pixels less then you want to, um, you want to take the brush size down and this one is real like fluffy, whatever, but I'm going to go through the one that I did before and kind of build, show the layers and then just show you some of these tips as I go. But, um, actually, don't let me just put this over here. Heck with it. Let's just put them all together. Um, okay. So this is the one that I did and did I not, uh, Lord. Okay. Where's my live one. Okay. So I just started with that, but I want to show you all of my layers and my brushes and just kind of take them down one by one here and just show you as I built it up. And then I can just show you a little practically. So let me hide these layers. So the first brush stroke that I did was I used 55. And so the image went from this to this and 55 is kind of a good brush i had the the size of the brush down a little bit small so i didn't displace it too much and we're just going to keep building layers adding brushes adding brush strokes and if you don't like something or it gets all messed up as you do it don't worry you can just paint another brush stroke over it so i went but two of the big important things that i wanted to share with you guys is number one when you're doing the brush stroke on some of them, um, you want to not just like say, okay, let me just make a demo here. Um, if I grabbed brush 55 and I just went like, uh, well, this brush is, doesn't displace very much, but if I just made one direction, like, and didn't respect like the subject matter at all, it's going to feel more like a filter. But 
So when you get in there, the first thing you want to do is just kind of cover everything with a brush. And then you want to go in and kind of follow some of the lines like of your subject, whether it's a human, whether it's a building, go along with some of that. And that is going to make it feel more artistic and less filtery because, you know, they have filters that, you know, you just can do this kind of things. But what the reason why the brushes are cool is that they give us more control and also and then in some places maybe add some detail so sometimes you want to get some of the brushes that don't displace the pixel so much and make the brush size really small and add some detail and then some places don't so that's the thing that makes it more fun and makes it quite cooler and you can see even on here some of the um some of the samples that I have on these brush things so you know you can hear I'm following the you know the curves of his pants I'm following this and it really gives a cool a better feeling um, like for example here on her hat I did the circle because if I just did all like one direction it wouldn't feel like a real you know kind of impressionist sort of effect so I followed the I followed the curves of her here I wonder if I can zoom in on this now I guess that is but you see I follow the curves of her arm and that makes it feel like more artistic so that's one of the important things same thing here I made these brush strokes out from like the little um, ballerina costumes and stuff so you you want to have that mix so I'm just gonna put back my layers here so that's 55 and it's nice because we'll get to kind of you'll kind of see how I build it up um, without uh, boring you guys too much um, yeah oh yeah that's the thing David is that like the 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 reason why you know there's those like smart PSDs where people are selling them that has a watercolor effect and it's doing some of them with filters and things like that but it has no control so that's the the whole reason of like really having these brushes is it gives you that artistic control and I'm just going to zoom in here so we can see brush 55. Um, it really gave it a nice overall impressionist effect. I was happy this brush wasn't um, too crazy. But here I'm adding brush 63, which had, so there's not, there's on and off. And I don't add it all over. So I just add it to some parts. So there's brush 63. And so then it, that one has a lot of texture in it. That's like more of an artistic brush. And so I put that on there, but, um, and I tend to use like the aligned brushes first and then the art, because there's two categories, aligned and artistic. Artistic displace the pixels more, but the aligned um, don't. And sometimes I find myself using the aligned first and then the artistic at the end, but you can use the artistic in the middle and then go over it again with some more uh, aligned brushes and it really kind of gives a, a cool thing. So that was brush 63 here's um oh and then i went ahead around the edges and i took the brush 65 which is an artistic one and just added a, that's like a very watercolory one um i'm going to show you these brushes and then i'll just do them in in live so i can show you a little bit um then we've got i didn't like how this looks so i brushed over this part in brush 71 which is also artistic but i was trying to kind of get that sort of sorted and then here's brush 19 so let's look at our thing um so there's 19 and i kind of just i use this one a lot i followed a lot of those rooftops and painted over it and you know so there we go that's 19 but i keep adding keep adding keep adding until i'm happy with it and this one might have turned out a little bit messy but like it's okay you can um you know just like adjust uh um you know like I, I i did this legit in one hour i mean from start to finish everything everything while i was getting ready so of course i can go in and um get more you know whatever with it so this one i added brush 18 and this is like a real vertically brush so i i like to go across you know paint that with that brush so I added some things there. And so the main thing is just changing it up. 
This one was brush 19 and I went along these railings sort of things. And so you can still see the photograph a little bit there, but then when I took that brush and I kind of just brushed that brush along there, that was cool. For brush, the, for the palms, you can see what I did here, the palms and some of the greenery, I used brush 59. So that's quite cool. And that's like an artistic brush. It's got all these little, um, I'll show it here. You can totally see those little, uh, those little strokes. But I thought that was fun for the palm trees and just to kind of blur it, make it like softer. And then, um, then what do we got? Oh, I didn't do anything on that one. This is brush 82, which is an artistic brush and it's very good for the foliage. So I just, you know, took my brush, I took brush 82 here, it's artistic, and just went over the things like that. And it kind of, I like that because it kind of hid some of these um, like realistic things like the this is like a petrol station right there so <laughs> you know kind of you're trying to like smush out some of those but yeah so that was brush 82 so here's the what what is before then 82 so it just adds a little more artistic flair there's brush 58 which was a little more displacing but i liked those little dots those little dots that you know added in there so i thought that was fun um why did i write artistic autumn 64 because mm, I don't think it was Artistic Autumn 64. Oh, I think it was, oh no, I think it was just Artistic Brush 64. So I kind of went around and played with the edges with the Artistic Brush 64. And then we've got Brush 80. I added, um, added a little bit of Brush 80. That was just, it's more, more impressionist, whatever. So you're getting the idea. So it's, it's, you know, it's impressionist, so it's supposed to be like artistic blurry, da da da, but whatever. And then the last thing that I did was um, I took at the end of the Instapressionist brushes, there's a texture brush. So I took texture one and I just brushed over some different areas, like kind of all over, and added a little bit of that texture, which felt like more of a canvas. So that's. Um, so that's kind of fun just to get that going. And then one of the other things that I'm gonna show you that I do is like kind of my little cheat thing is I will take um, one of my, some of my brushwork brushes and just paint some like textured strokes like in different places. And it kind of gives the illusion that I like drew that more, which is fun. Um, Oh yeah, like D David, you could totally, totally have fun and play around. You can see like, you can use this Instapressionist or the, Inst uh, you know, the Instapressionist technique with different brushes and see what happens. And even maybe I'll just, just do that just for fun in a second, but they're going to displace it more. So you lose, might lose more of the image, but honestly, you can have some absolutely cool effects. Like, hello, super cool. We're going to, we're going to look at that. Um, so yeah, so that was the base. So there we've got, here is, let's see, let me turn back the, so there's the photo, that's from the photo, and already we went from photo to the filter to the impressionist, and you know, I could get in there and get more or whatever, but we didn't have to draw anything, it's pretty cool, pretty fast. So this is something that like anybody can do, and so yeah, it's funny, um, one time, uh, the, this photo blog, um, featured these brushes, which was really good. I had like a total boost of sales that weekend from the, these brushes and everything, but it's so funny. It's like a big photo blog, and, but in the comments were so many, like there was photographers and there were so many haters that were like, this isn't painting. This is fake. This is like, yeah, okay, but this is cool. So why shouldn't, this is technology. Why shouldn't I use it? But Oh my gosh, they were so like totally um, like haters <laughs> about it. I had to like stop looking at the comments, but it was funny because for all the people that were like hating on it, I was like, well, I was the one laughing because I had a total great weekend of sales thanks to the article. And so even with all the haters and stuff, plenty of people like photographers um, downloaded that. So that was fun. So 
So here you can see, um, I did add some watercolors around the edges and stuff, but what I really think kind of makes it look a little bit nicer is, um, is adding these, these brush strokes here of brushwork. And I'm going to just kind of show my little, um, my little of like how I did that. So let's, let's see here. Let's take off the sides. I'm backing off here. Okay. So basically what I did to just give a little bit more definition to the thing. And it was funny because at first I wanted to, um, so I think these were all made with like brushwork 10. So let me just show you this brush really fast. Um, brush tool, ooh, brush work, brush 10. So they've got some really nice, um, uh, let's see here, really nice texture in this brush like this. And then, you know, you can take the size down they're great when you want to add like really bold texture. Of course, you can just do um, full, full pressure and, you know, do shapes and stuff. Or you can do small lines, take it down, you know, have a line like this. But they've got a lot of really great texture in them. I like, I like to use these brushes where you can see the texture. So I think it's really fun to kind of play with that. So what I did was I was going to take different, like, color match and take this and like pick this color, click here, go a little bit lighter, and then like add a brush stroke on there. But I just decided to be like totally lazy. And so what I did was I simply added white brush strokes because um, I knew that I just wanted it to lighten some areas. So here you can see uh, the brush strokes and I just put it the blend mode on screen and then I put the opacity at 78 but it's funny because those brush strokes just add a little bit of touch a little bit of definition to some of those areas and just make you feel like oh yeah like somebody actually made those strokes rather than it was computer generated or you know from the brush so this is like a little sneaky why not but it also helps it make it a feel a little bit more handmade, even though we're totally using the brushes. And then I did the same thing for dark colors, except I just took a dark brown or yeah, darker brown, not a black because I didn't want to be too cartoony. And then here you can see where I added those just on some of the lines on some of where like the dark started or some of the horizontal lines. And so I feel like that that added and made it feel a little more handmade. It's still impressionist. It's still probably a little bit messier than I would have like liked it, but I did this totally fast. So whatever. And then I took, um, oh, this was actually, I went into the regular impressionist brushes. Um, so I went into my modern impressionist brush collection and I got a color blending watercolor brush. And I actually opened up my colors of the Cote d'Azur because this is the Cote d'Azur. So I grabbed this blue that I already had because I didn't want to say there wasn't a great blue in that photo. And I just took like um, Modern Impressionist uh, 74. And I just went around the sides and made this nice sort of thing. And it took me a while because it's still not perfect here. So then I, I took brush 27 and a lighter color. This was also a bit watercolory and I just layered it up. And then I took brush 27 with the darker blue and just added some dots on there. And then the same thing here, I added some dark here. So I just went to this darker, like a, I don't know which blue I took, maybe this one. And then I went to like, I think it was brush 27. Usually I can get, sometimes I look at my brush chart. I don't know, maybe it was, maybe this one. No. I don't know which, which color palette I use, maybe that. But you know, it's nice. They're pressure sensitive. You can get some nice, um, nice effects. Let me turn that off. So that's layer 14. Oh, 
maybe it was just the same one I just kind of added some. So this again is like adding things up and um, oh dear, we have like a spam thing here. Let me let me try to hide this. Uh, report message. View ban. Let's see your ban. Oh, I had somebody writing cow moo. <laughs> All these things. I'm dead. Okay, hang on just one second. I'm going to make sure. Sorry, I'm just checking my my thing here. I'm going to try to ban. Let's see your view. Okay. Ban. Okay. Okay, I'm deleting some spam. Oh, I, I think I've really arrived if I'm getting spam. That's great. Okay, cool. All right, moving on up here. Okay, so yeah, so that just added also to the illusion that I actually drew something here. We love it. And then I just added like, oh, and then for the last to kind of blend it in together, I put like a new layer and I went back actually to my main image, you know, layer with aligned and I kind of I think I took a brush and just um, went over this a little bit. So, ah, no, but let's see here. Here we go. Yeah. And I think I took the opacity down to like 26. So this was just, you know, kind of melding. There's, you can see the brush stroke, but it was melding those two sort of things. And yeah, so that's cool. And then let's see what else we did. So that was pretty much the main bit, gist of it. But then I was like, oh, well, um, I want to kind of like, uh, you know, do something with this. So say this would be like a travel poster or something like that. Well, then I would want to do something like this. So I just real quick, I mean, I just did this like half an hour ago. I was like scrambling going, oh my God, okay, I need to do something for this today's live. Like, let's do something quick. And this one i'll just explain to you what i did but again like hello these are no drawing abilities so i took um one of my brushwork brushes and made the outlines of these um lemons because this is like this could be like for citrus festival or something like that and you can check out my layer groups and stuff but i made these and then i just took um so i went in and i took like my pattern stamp tool using my regular impressionist you know um technique and what i did to give all those lemons the same kind of feel is i filled it in with like a base color and then i added even though all the lemons are separate so i can move them i made the clipping mask on top of them and i did the same thing on every lemon so let me just take one here um is this the one over here yeah okay so and that's what give them a coherent feeling so I just, let's see here, when I added some little strokes at the end to give it a little whatever. Um, okay, so this lemon, I have the base here. I wanna turn off the accents that I did. I think that's here, maybe it's here. What the heck, what the hecky heck? Oh yeah, there's some, I wanna turn these off cause I added those later. So these are real simple. I just made a shape with the brushwork and then I went in with um, like modern impressionist brush number one, which I think it's a, it's a really nice one. I wanted something kind of jag jaggedy and I got to remember to turn off aligned, turn off your aligned when you're using the regular. And this just got some great lemon. These are colors sampled straight from lemons and citrus. So just did something like that. And then I took, um, I don't know which, I took another one of the Modern Impressionist brushes, but I think I forgot to write it down. Oh, brush 14 maybe. So then I just took like another lighter color palette, which this one doesn't really have a lot of color variation. And then I took, I think it was brush 14 and I just added a little stroke. So I did that. I added both of those brush strokes to each of the lemons. And really, that's that's all I did. And I took brush 14 and did the, I picked out a green. And I picked out a green. I don't even think I picked out a green from this collection. I picked out a green from like here from my uh, 
um, my Modern Impressionist. So I did the same thing with the leaves here. I made like the outline and then I just took this green and kind of, you know, did a thing like this. So it gives us those kind of V sort of things like a leaf thing, but really I put minimal effort into those. But then the thing that I did to kind of like accent everything, did I turn off? Okay. So this is, this is where I was. So I drew the shapes, drew like a little bit of, um, you know, the, use the modern impressionist brushes, but as you can see, it feels like, you know, like you drew something, but it's, it's pretty nice. And then just to add a little something and also to kind of tie it in with the background, I added on the leaves, I just added some little like brush strokes, simple brush strokes. And uh, for the lemons, same thing. I added a lighter brush stroke around some of them. And then I added a darker one, just sampled from the lemon and got a little bit darker. And that just gives it a little touch of handmade feel. But the cool thing is, is like you guys know, I can't really draw, you know, nothing like fancy, whatever. And that just kind of give a feeling like even having those sort of like side things that it gives the feeling that um, this was like handmade. So it doesn't necessarily feel so um, like uh, machine made or filter or it's like an AI filter or something like this, you know? So, and you get to have the fun of it. That's the fun part is like, uh, you know, just making those decisions, having fun, interacting with the process and the, like legit anybody can make this, you know? So that's the fun part. And then the last thing also that I did was I went underneath those lemons. So I wanted a little extra texture. So I took from the citrus brush collection, um, I did, and these, these, these brushes are cool. Actually, the citrus ones, um, they have some great texture. So I took some of the texture brushes. I think I used subtle texture one and like I grabbed the blue, which is the multicolor. And even with these, you can, even it's a texture, it, it blends it. So you can choose a multicolor and it'll still look okay. It'll still look good. It, it's texture, but you can use the multicolor thing. Um, and so I just added some like texture kind of behind there. I added, I took that blue. I went back to my citrus palettes and grabbed a lemon color and I added a little bit there. So just some, just some things. So this could be um, like a travel poster sort of vibe, you know, and that's it so far. And then now I want to play with, um, oh, maybe I should go in and just show you some of the, um, playing and just keeping adding those, um, those brush strokes. But, uh, and then maybe this could be like a poster or something, you know, for whatever. So maybe I would, I just, <laughs> this is my amazing lettering, amazing lettering. So I was thinking it may be here somehow. I, maybe I could, um, write in like bienvenue à Montan, which is welcome to Montan. Um, so something like that, but like also whenever I'm doing, if I wanted to do some letters here, probably what I would do would, I would be, because I'm not a letterer, I would probably type it out in a script, in a pretty script that I like. And then I would follow that or go over that script in that brushwork brush 10, because I've used it in the foreground, I've used it in the background, and I think it would add, um, kind of tie everything together, but I don't want to do that right now because I'm lazy and, you know, whatever. But um, just so you know, if you're a subscriber, you'll have this. Uh, I'm going to give the, the PSD file. It will be available for you. So anyway, let me go back into my thing here. Okay, that's the accents, right? Those are just the accents. Yeah. So here's my main group. So I had told you guys the main two tips to do was to, um, let's here, let's go to my pattern stamp tool, aligned impressionist, grab the thing, and then let's go to our Instapressionist, not impressionist, no brushwork, no modern, Instapressionist. So yeah, the fun thing with these is 
like if this messes it up too much just right left bracket and take the size down and there you can like even you can bring in some more of the um more of the details or something you know that you want like see as i'm going through there it's kind of since i took the size down of that brush that brought in some more details and what's kind of cool is it's kind of like um bow like bowling with bumpers you know what i mean you can't go in the gutter um with these so that's that's the fun part you know you can't mess it up if you don't like that layer paint over you don't even have to delete the layer like this one is kind of a wild brush this was like this would maybe be good for um you know like i don't know something like this or something if you've got like swirls this is a very swirly brush and these are all taking advantage of the bristle brush engine but if you don't like it make another layer above it um and just draw over it so literally you can't mess it up aligned 48 this one no what's the aligned 52 is very uh kind of sticking to things so um if you ever like think it gets too messy, you can go back over this brush really lines things back up, but still has a bit of that um, effect. But as you can see, you know, you can, uh, why did I put these on the top? Yeah. You can follow those lines and kind of bring some kind of uh, order back to that. Here, here I'm going, because it's vertical, I'm just gonna go up and down. And then there we're getting kind of things back in order um so you, and then you can follow the line here like sideways okay but if i s see how it's messing up the windows so i could just do that and then go back over the windows so that's the cool thing is it is just you know you can just do it until you're happy play around keep adding but there's no um you really can't mess it up that looks nice actually i'm digging it um there's see there's that that added a lot of like uh um maybe made it a little bit nicer to be fair because with buildings the thing is is buildings you can't get too crazy without them looking messy that's why you can have more fun if you have say nature um so there are like different sort of uh levels of craziness you can go to but again check out my uh here you can check out lots of things here you can see you can go a little bit more crazy um even here de depending on the image but when you have those straight lines of like a building okay yeah you might need to kind of bring it back in for it to feel good feel like whatever but let's zoom out here okay let's go back to the photo but really honestly the it, uh i think we've done a good job to be to be honest here's the photo and here's the thing i don't think it feels um terribly terribly uh you know fake or you know whatever and us adding those little touches like those little brush strokes of the brushwork add that feeling that like oh somebody did that you know that wasn't like because it's so obvious you know so those are those are my little tricks that i would tell you and then oh so long as david was um had mentioned that so let's just Okay, so this is the starter image that we work with. So I'll just show you kind of, the, you can always play around and just see what, what different brushes happen. But okay, so first of all, I would just like go to edit, define pattern, click okay. And then let's find our image. We've got aligned and impressionist checked. I, I can tell you for sure that like the glitch core would are probably going to be wild um uh let's see your line let's see your, uh, where is it line impressionist okay so sometimes it's just gonna like absolutely um you know mess it up so much it, it just depends but i actually will like you know you can go over and see but sometimes it's cool because you can i've made digital backgrounds this way um but it does kind of still 
uh, stay over the general areas. I've played around with this idea before with images because you can see like here it's going to be mainly green, but it messes, it, you know, moves the thing so much. Um, but you know, what's funny is that these, um, the, this one is pretty good. This is uh, glitch core 18. So to be honest, the, the glitch core brushes and the Instapressionist both use the bristle brush engine. It's just that some of these, when I made them super wild and the other ones, I kept them really um, not wild. This is really interesting. I like this effect. So you can have fun with those. The, but you see how it still keeps that color from underneath it. Could do something like really abstract here. I think you can have fun with that. Okay, that's the glitch. That's some of the glitch core. There's too many. So much fun. But I did. Uh, yeah, so when you have some time, just play around. Um, to be fair, I did do. Uh, hold on, I want to show you guys where I kind of did do that, that, um, that thing. Oh, I think it was in a live stream. Okay. I don't want to see myself here. Um, oh my God. How long ago was it? Oh, maybe I did a live stream on here. I think, oh, I live streamed on my YouTube channel. Hold on. As long as I'm here, I'm going to show y'all the channel. Uh, videos. It was here. Here I took that photo from, oh dear. I took that photo from the, this painted photo and used that aligned technique. And you know, it was cool. Oh wait, David, as long as you're here, I'm like, I want to show you guys the, I think the tie dye will be funsies um, using this, but yeah, you can just totally have fun. Like here's aligned and impressionist. It's wild. Let's see here, five. But you know, like as you can see, it's still kind of, you can do some really fun photo editing or photo accents and stuff and then like maybe play with the opacity. So this is kind of like, if we zoom in here, you know, you can get some cool effects. So it's displacing it in a wild kind of way. But this is, a cool way to get some cool effects going on. Yeah, to be honest, I just love to just pick up a brush and just, um, you know, see what happens. That's fun. Oh, I bet the pattern painters is kind of fun. Uh, that's wild. There's too many. I would have a lot of fun with them. Gosh, I bet the iridescent would be crazy. It's wild. There's too many. Um, oh yeah, David, absolutely blending. Uh, all about the blending modes. Totally. You can definitely, I've done that before. I've actually, yeah, I've, I've played with that. Um, Oh my gosh, now I'm like, okay, I'm gonna wrap it up. What are we like? We're at like one, um, one hour. So it's, so I did all that in, well, okay. Did all that in an hour, but one, back in the day before I had released that, I took this, oh my gosh, when I'm scrolling back and looking at things that I used to do and then I'm like, oh my God, I've come so far. Legit. Where is it? Hold on. I took a Balmain look. Okay. Oh, we're almost there. But I had played with the blend modes a lot. Here's one. This is a Versace look. So this is some, you know, examples of like what you can do with that. You see, I, I took from a photo and then, you know, played with all those different things. But there was one that I did that I had. I know it's on here somewhere. Oh, yeah. I played with the blend modes. Oh, you know, here it is. Here. Uh, this one I have not been able to recreate like I got to recreate something like this but this one turned out dope because this was like a Marquesa look and you can see 
I played with the blend modes. I played with screen. Some layers were screen. I actually grabbed some different brushes and it turned out, I mean, the dress and the photo was absolutely like ethereal to begin with, but the photo effect that I was able to do with an early version of these brushes, I thought was super dope. Like I, and it was a lot of different blend modes. So anyway, that's the 411. So, um, yeah, we started with, let's see, zero. We started with this. We ended up with this loves it um that to that and did it in an hour and with no drawing ability so you know me no drawing ability whatever so i think it's not so bad anyway i'm happy it's friday and i'm gonna put uh see, while this is processing i'm gonna upload these um P psd files in case you guys want to check those out if you're a member and yeah, so now it's time for me to, well, I have loads of work to do, but when I finish this, I'm always like, whew, okay, I can breathe a little bit. So hopefully you guys picked up a tip or two. Yeah, if you want to check out the, um, you can get the free brushes on Adobe Creative Cloud. I've collaborated with them and also the Impressionist brushes. Get some, get some freebies, try it out yourself. And yeah. Hey, Nicole. Thank you so much. Happy Friday. Yeah. I'm like, it's Friday. Then. I can't wait. Yeah. If it, it feels like a Friday and hopefully I'll have some, uh, I'll have some girl, neighborhood girlfriends from the dog park over for happy hour drinks, um, later on. So that's my treat of the week and yeah, everybody have a good one. Oh my God. Thank you guys for joining and dropping in your comments. Loves it. And I swear, I keep doing one hour lives, but I swear to God, I'm going to like be trying to do some half hour and short ones because, you know, want to make it fun and fast and not like drag on. So, okay. Catch you guys on, um, it should be Tuesday. So make sure you signed up for my newsletter and I'll put the schedule out on Monday. All right. Talk to you soon.